And welcome back to Atheist Experiences Live, December 22nd, 2002. Happy winter solstice, everybody. Yes. It's the big, the longest day of the year. Uh, shortest. Shortest. Shortest? That's right. It is December. It's December, yeah. It's winter. That's right. <laughs> That's a bit of a, getting all confused, all turned but around. today is longer than yesterday. There we are. Yeah. Getting all confused. Getting turned around. But anyway, thanks for joining us again. Uh, welcome back to the show. Uh, this we are sponsored, as always, by Atheist Community of Austin, a nonprofit educational organization promoting positive atheism and the separation of church and state. ACA has weekly meetings every Sunday morning, 10.30 a.m. at Hot Jumbo Bagels, located downtown 307 West 5th Street, between Guadalupe and La Vaca, except for the first Sunday of each month, when we have our lecture series in the Longhorn Room of First Cafeteria in North Cross Mall. Our next lecture will be January 5th. And have we confirmed our speaker yet? Yep. Okay. He's coming. Van Orden. Yep. Okay. Well, the uh, the lawyer is it Thomas? Uh, I believe so. Yes. Yeah, yes. Van Orden, who is the uh, the homeless lawyer who is challenging uh, the uh, Ten Commandments uh, monument yep. on uh, the Capitol grounds. He'll be an interesting fellow to talk to. I'd like to uh, yeah. like to hear what he has to yeah, say. Yeah, looking forward to it. Um, and that'll be uh, this coming uh, two Sundays from now, the the fifth of January at uh, First Cafeteria in North Cross Mall. It's the Atheist Happy Hour. Uh, takes place at Antonio's Tex-Mex, uh, located near uh, Thursday evenings, about 7.30, p.m., located near the intersection of I-35 and Highway 183. And Godless Gamers is our little uh, fun once-a-week uh, playtime. Uh, Monday evenings, about 7 p.m., at Russell and Virginia Glasser's house. And talk to Russell or Jenny about how to get their directions. Uh, Solstice Party. Yes. Yeah. Was yesterday. Was yesterday. And how was that? It was good. It was a yeah. good turnout. I'm very sorry I missed it. Um, probably, I'd guess maybe 20, 25 people, something like that. Right. Wow. Um, really packed up. It, it, was, it was a good crowd. Oh. It was a lot of fun. I'm sorry I couldn't make it, but uh, I'm sure it was great. So that's an annual event. And, yep. You know, but, but that wasn't our Life of Brian party. That was. No, we didn't show Life of Brian. Well, that's fine. Um, we have plenty. <laughs> there, there's other things that, that we have. I was shown a week or two before. There's other so. things that we have to do at parties and that. Yeah. It doesn't have to be like, yeah. the only atheist party activity. So, yeah. you know. so sitting around the TV. So. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I'm sure it was lots of fun. Great. Well, uh, the Nonprofits is our weekly internet uh, radio show, which plays at the atheistnetwork.com website, 2 o'clock in the afternoon every Saturday, hosted by Jeff D., Russell Glasser. Uh, and you, uh, it's an MP3 stream. So uh, you can just listen along, and there is a live chat room where you can interact with the program via chat. Uh, two, th two o'clock in the afternoon, every Saturday at atheistnetwork.com, the nonprofits. Uh, a lot of fun, uh, great radio show, and there's the information uh, right there, too. Uh, the University Atheists and Agnostics is a registered UT student organization uh, founded by our very own Charles Tabney. He's been very successful in his first semester. Uh, next semester, uh, they are having their uh, four o'clock uh, four o'clock Friday meetings again, and they've changed to Rainy Hall. Uh, there's a new room, 3.102A, looks like, uh, rainy. Uh, starting next semester, I guess, whenever the, the first week the classes are. I don't know, what, what is that? When, when do classes technically start, Charles? I don't remember. Uh, just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's trying to block that out. He doesn't want to know. Uh, okay, but when it starts up um, in January, it's a rainy hall fr uh, Friday afternoons at 4 4 o'clock p.m., not 4.30, 4 o'clock p.m. University Atheists and Agnostics, if you are a UT student or faculty member, there's the email address right there to uh, write and get more information from Charles. Very successful organization. First really good, solid UT uh, students, uh, atheist, agnostic group that I know of. I've been here since, you know, in Austin since the late 80s. So, okay. so very good. Okay, I believe that that uh, covers it for uh, first announcements. Uh, if you want to find out more about our fine group, you can visit uh, atheist-community.org and get more information about us and our meetings and what have you. There it is, the bottom of the screen. So I guess it's time for the news. Uh, Ashley, why don't you tell us what's going on on planet Earth All right. this week? Uh, we'd mentioned before that we had the Solstice Party yesterday, and mm -hmm. we used to watch Life of Brian. Mm -hmm. uh, we could have watched it again, and this time used it as a historical document. <laughs> Um, there is a Christmas documentary that's, that's playing in Britain, uh -huh. BBC One, that is questioning some of the tenets of Christianity, hmm. and this is going to get people flaming mad. <laughs> um, in particular, the program about the Virgin Mary to be shown next Sunday night, which I assume hmm. is actually tonight in England on BBC One, mm -hmm. suggests that she was probably a 13-year-old when she gave birth and considers the possibility she became pregnant through being raped by a Roman soldier. Mm. Mm -mm. 
Um, oh, that's not going to make very many people happy at all, <laughs> is it? Uh, uh, and I, I love the, the quote in here. David Hilborn, uh, the Evangelical Alliance's theological advisor, said, and I quote, Mm-hmm. The danger with these theories is that marginal ideas are given more prominence than is warranted. Hmm. The rape allegation is not something that should be given much credence, and there yeah, is I mean, far more manuscript attestation from ancient documents to the idea of the virgin birth. Yeah. So this wacky idea that she could have gotten pregnant through normal human means is just completely ludicrous. Yeah, but I mean, uh, fringe theories. Well, first off, so, right? Yeah. Okay, the whole the whole doctrine of the virgin birth, I think, comes from from a a a um, misinterpretation of uh, Isaiah chapter seven yes. with the Emmanuel prophecy. I think it's a mistranslation of maiden or something like that. Yeah, it was uh, so. it was a word in the original Hebrew that means just a uh, young woman. Yeah, you know, yeah. It's, it's translated to being meaning virgin. But then, of course, Isaiah chapter seven doesn't is not a prophecy, and most biblical scholars agree that refers to the coming Jesus. Although Christians use it okay. to imply that all the time. Okay. Um, uh, but uh, but it, yeah, so the first they do a mistranslation of one word, yeah. and then they try to apply a prophecy that's actually referring to a different child at a different time and a whole different set of circumstances <laughs> to uh, Jesus yeah. uh, who came along later. So um, yeah, there's, so there's so the whole idea of of the virgin birth, I think at least scripturally, I think has has been scotched. Um, but also, you know, okay. Assuming that all of this even happened, right? Okay. I mean, of course. I mean, it's a, okay. the, the idea that uh, it's, I mean, how do women give birth? Well, first they have to like have sex with someone, and that's yes. generally speaking. And we don't really have any good, reliable instances of uh, you know virgin births happening too terribly often to realize that exactly. this is a thing that happens every now and again. No, we don't really have those accounts. <laughs> um, if there was a Mary, and if she gave birth to this this man who became known as Jesus and who did all these things, odds are it was a perfectly normal birth. Yeah. This is just another part of the whole Jesus story that has become that has become mythologized over the years. Yeah. Now I remember a few few weeks on, a few weekends ago on the show, I was talking about how you know I. I, my own opinion, right, is that I don't think it's all that improbable that the Jesus character in the exactly. Gospels exactly. had a real-life analog or a real person who was in so There might have even been a real guy named Jesus going yeah. around doing teachings and what have you. That the Bible is based on. Yeah, but stories about him, and as yeah. have become uh, you know, conveyed in the Gospels... You know, ended up being mythologized but yeah. by the by the time these oral these these right. stories got set down. Yep, they're in told writing. and retold and retold over a yeah. couple hundred years, and things get blown a little bit out of proportion. Yeah. But then, of course, how what what evidence do they have that a rape occurred? I mean, how do we know that it just wasn't Joseph True. and Mary, of course, and their baby? You know? Of course. Um, so. So I don't know that there's really any how, how they would end up finding evidence of a ring. Can't get forensic evidence, <laughs> not after all this time. So I don't know. How, years is a bit long. I don't know how they would have any evidence that it was a rape of a Roman true, true. soldier, unless they just have been watching too much *The Life of Brian*. <laughs> uh, but uh, I don't know. Okay. But what? Anything else in that documentary? The, the documentary. Uh, was about to no, cause? they really didn't go into very much. Because um, you remember a few years, a couple of years ago, uh, ABC had that Peter Jennings. Hosted documentary, where that, that that inflamed the because again, and it cast cast doubts on the virgin birth and uh, talk, it, it was all about who was Jesus really, and you know a lot of Christian doctrine about you know Jesus's divinity. They hmm. they, they presented a skeptical approach. Wow, and cool. um, you know the fundies just uh, hit the ceiling, <laughs> and. Um, not so, all that surprising, I guess. But this sounds like they're going even to a, a little bit further. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's gonna tick off a couple people. I, but you but have that it at Christmas. I mean, they're showing. I just kind of. This kind of, you know. I know. Just before the actual Christmas, they're going to show yeah. this and question the virgin birth. Uh, granted, it is in England, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I mean, they're a little, a little more relaxed in their religious attitudes. About, exactly. You know, the, exactly. So I think they said, uh, I think they even mentioned here, um, already convinced that, oh yeah, the BBC will court contra controversy for, from some religious believers already convinced that it's a nest of atheists <laughs> by airing a documentary questioning, blah, blah, well, blah. it might be. But, you know, I mean, there are. It's a den of atheists. <laughs> the leader, but again, the attitudes in that nation, I mean, sure, there are religious people over there who are, are very devout. And, of course. And, but still, you know, in England is one of these few civilized countries in the world where it's really kind of okay to be an atheist yeah. and say so. The um, 
archbishop or I've forgotten his name. Uh, the, no, the leader of the House of Commons. Okay. Whose name I don't recall off the top of my head is an atheist. Okay. And he says so to newspapers. Wow. Cool. And and his political career it doesn't go down in flames because of it. Yeah. You know, his vice president do that. Yeah. <laughs> I know exactly. Yeah. <laughs> You just in America, you would never have, um, you know, uh, any, any, if you if your politician came out and said, "No, I don't have an invisible friend." Yeah, you know, that would just doom him to, uh, you know, yeah, that'd be the end of his career right away. So, I want fries with that? So that <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not quite that uh, bad, but <laughs> fast food restaurants are a den of atheists. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Next one. Um, they had a story a couple of years back, I believe it was, mm-hmm. about the Raelians. Mm. Uh, those strange people, uh, <laughs> the Raelians, a free love fringe sect <laughs> that runs the theme park UFO land in Quebec, uh, Quebec's eastern township. Do they, is that really what they are? I mean, do they do that? Do they have like big like communal orgies and stuff? I, I don't know. According to, I mean, a free love free love fringe sect. That, so as, as described by that news article. Exactly. Yeah. So mm. who knows? But, but yeah, I mean, they've always been a little bit wacky. They believe that the Earth was populated by aliens, um, that we were a big medical experiment or something like that, and they planted us. You know, mm-hmm. I can't remember if they if they say that aliens put humans here, or if they just kind of you know planted it with the first microbes and stuff, and then evolution took over. Yeah. No, they they um, I know that they support intelligent design. Okay. They they don't think that. See, this is what's goofy about them, right? They uh, and, and we we've had an, uh, recently an interesting experience with the Raelians that I'll yeah. get to in a second. But um, <clears throat> they came out in support of intelligent design, okay, and against evolution, okay. And it's because they think that life on this planet was we were engineered by aliens, yeah, okay. But then, of course, the question is, you can pretty much ask the same question to them as you yeah. can to a, a Christian fundamentalist is, where did the aliens come from? Yeah. Okay, fine. If you don't think that life evolved on this planet through natural selection, that it was this deliberately engineered process, okay, that's fine. But how do you account for, A, all of the evidence that we've got that suggests yeah. evolution is the way yeah. life got the way it is? And B, where did your aliens come from? Yeah. Is there were absolutely the, any evidence? Were of they engineered by a race of super aliens, or did they evolve <laughs> on their own planet yeah. and then figure out how it worked, and then came here and, and deliberately engineered it? I yeah. mean, at some point, I mean, did at any point evolution? Are you willing to yeah. admit that it, that it could have played a part? So nah, that's just, yeah, that's another step. But that's the, the first time I've ever right. heard them described as a free love. Sect. Yeah, that that was that's a new one on me too. Yeah, um, if they're a free love sect, why do they need to clone things? Well, that's what we're getting to. All right. Um, <laughs> All right. They are actually saying that they have now successfully cloned someone, and they're going to give birth uh, sometime like this week. They're hoping, you know, the, the person who's actually holding the baby says they hope it's Christmas Day. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, they've, they've I, according to them, mm-hmm. they have actually successfully cloned a human, mm-hmm. implanted the embryo. Um, it's actually the it's a U.S. woman. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was unable to get pregnant by her husband mm-hmm. through you know normal means. So they took out you know a cell from mm-hmm. something or other, got a donor egg, got a donor egg, put the DNA in it, implanted it in her, and now she's pregnant. They say. They say. Yeah. Um, there's also uh, an Italian bunch, um, separate from the Raelians, who have claimed the same thing, and I think they said they uh, mm-hmm. sometime relatively soon. Uh, they're going to have that uh, back in. They're going to give birth in January, apparently. So. So they're saying okay. they have two cloned babies on the way. Uh, yes, one in Italy and one in apparently Canada or the U.S. Uh, this is actually uh, Quebec-based. Huh. So I'm assuming this is actually in Canada. Okay. Um, but again, they're actually going to open this up. Um, according to the Raelians, they're going uh-huh. to open it up and allow other scientists to get in on it and. You know, do tests on it and make sure it actually is a clone, you know, and whatnot. Okay. So, we'll see about that. Why, okay, but why has this all, I mean, okay, I admit that there are, you know, public attitudes against cloning that I yes. think are unfounded, but that... I don't know about that. The, well, I, in some in some areas. Uh, that, but, uh, you know, do we, has anyone met these women? These, has, has anyone, have they been interviewed? Does anyone have pictures it of them? Was do we not, know their names? It was not said in the story at all. Okay. Just that a U.S. based woman. Okay. Um, and that's all. Who's in her 30s? Okay. 
So, so we have to take their word for it that this, these women even exist. Uh, at, at right now, yes. Okay. Um, but they said they are going to make the results available. They will be, you know, available for testing and everything. Hmm. So, hmm. okay, well, that'll actually happen. Yeah, we'll see. But perhaps. Hmm. So it's it's not impossible, just somewhat unlikely. You know, I, it, as much as I would like to see um, people's attitudes towards cloning you know, simmer down. Yeah. And as much as I would like to see, like, cloning become in, in appropriate yes. areas, specifically therapeutic. Yes. You know, yeah. um, you, you know for this whole idea of being able to, you know, gr- people can grow their own replacement organs. Yeah. yeah. You know, so as they age, they can, re- you know, that's just, a, I see that as being a very viable life extension technology. Yeah. Reproductive cloning, I just don't see... What okay, if if well, okay, if you have an infertile couple, fine. But then you know, but, but then I, I think that you know maybe just if you wanted to have for altruistic reasons, um, you and know, again, I don't look even, at other th- avenues first, like adoption. Yeah, I, I uh, don't even know yet but, if I would support it for reproductive purposes, even even if they're both infertile. Yeah. We have a lot of kids in this world that simply aren't wanted as it is. Yeah, see, that's what I'm thinking. Look at adoption. Yeah, see, that's what uh, I don't know. agree that. Yeah. See, I would say, you know, do that first, right? But yeah. I mean, uh, but, but of course, some couples at the same time are just obsessed with having their own baby. Yeah. And you for... can't change that attitude either. Yeah. Uh, but as much as I would like to see these kinds of scientific advancements uh, work out and the public have a less of a fearful reactionary attitude towards yeah. them, I'd really rather they didn't come from these fringe groups like the Raelians, okay? <laughs> I'd rather it wasn't these guys kind of doing them. Um, exactly. We'll see. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm skeptical about this. I think that I have a feeling that they're doing this just for headlines and for publicity. You know, they want to draw attention to themselves. Um, cloning is not an easy process by any means. I mean, you know, back when they were doing the first sheep and the first mice and what have you, it would yeah. take something like 270 attempts yeah. before you got uh, a clone that was vi- that was like a viable yeah. living thing. Yeah. So it's not just, uh, you know, it's not like you see cloning going on in the movies exactly. where you just, you're, you're basically Xeroxing yourself. That's not, it's yeah. not that simple. Yeah. Um, yeah. Really, just strange. They, they sent us an email not long ago. <laughs> yeah, I uh, never actually got that. I don't know if maybe I just deleted it without reading. It. Um, I, I, I yeah, asked. But... Uh, I asked for it to be sent to me several times. I never. Okay. I, I never ended up getting a copy in my in my inbox. I don't know. Oh, okay. But uh, the uh, I did read the copy that uh, that. Um, uh, Jeff, had or uh, Jeff had, and uh, basically the gist of the letter was they wrote us. They wrote to us as a group, saying hello, fellow atheists. <laughs> You know, we all ought to stand together for the rights of atheists. So why don't we like link to each other's websites and, and yeah. be pals? Because we're all atheists. They believe that we came from aliens, they're not like, gods. Yeah. So you know, maybe technically the Raelians are atheists in that they don't believe in supernatural divine gods. But they've still got some wacky beliefs. Yeah, but I don't think that what they believe and what they've replaced that belief with is fundamentally any different, right? Yeah. They just call gods aliens. Yeah. Basically. And if you, if, you know, I think that they, again, should bear, they bear the burden of proof that uh, these aliens did what they're yeah. saying they did. Now, in all Just honesty, like religious people bear the burden of proof that they have, that their invisible friend is doing what they say yeah. their invisible friend does. In all honesty, so. they do have more of a chance of being right than most religious people, though, I think. It's still by pretty a, fringe. By a it's still pretty fringe. Distant decimal point, I suppose. But, but yeah. Well, we know so far, life exists. Insofar as they're not suggesting supernatural so, reasons. Exactly. Exactly. It's, again, it's natural processes. So yeah. that, that at least humans got here. But I could now pro- again, you can go back to where the aliens came from. Yeah. Again. But, but again, I could tell you I had a pet unicorn, right? And they, yeah. that, that would be like a natural biological life form. Exactly. There's more of a chance of that than God. Uh, not much. Yeah. But, but I mean, possible. but what are the odds that they're, I mean, what, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Well, it's not, it's not that odds are, are the, the, um, the criterion, but I mean, come on. No one ever yeah. has before exactly. encountered a live unicorn in the wild. And suddenly, if I as a guy came out and said, yeah, I've got one in my backyard. Yeah, you know, I'd be like that would. Well, gee, that's interesting. You know, why hasn't any zoologist in yeah. the history of time seen one before you? Well, it's just because this is mine and he's special. He only likes me. Um, so, I don't know. <laughs> strange, strange, just, just yeah. strange beliefs. Just will just go on and on and on, don't they? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, well. uh, two quick update stories too. Hmm. Uh, this is gonna be pretty quick. Uh, we had the story last week, I believe, about New Orleans trying to get the, uh, or actually Baton Rouge, 
tried to get the uh, evolution disclaimer in the textbooks there. Yeah, for uh, the whole state, right? The whole state of Louisiana. I believe it was, yes, the entire state. Yeah. Uh, that's been struck down. Mm. Uh, the full board voted 7-3 hey. to three to strip the language mm -hmm. from it. Um, and let's see. That's a good margin, 7-3. to three. Surprisingly. Good. Yeah. Yeah, not bad. Um, although one of, the, one of the supporters of having it in there mm -hmm. uh, complained that the textbooks and questions are rife with errors, not taking into account critical gaps in the evidence used to support evolution. There's a lot of outdated information in these books and uh, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, which is a valid complaint, possibly. Yeah. If the books do have errors in them, that we need to know about, we have to fix. Yeah. But that's oh. not a reason to tear out an entire section and just toss it in the trash. Well, it's not a reason, a to, reason to get it fixed. It's not a reason to replace uh, the science with with some metaphysical explanation. Or try, exactly. And, and, and try to call that scientific, yeah. right? You don't, you don't fix an error by inserting another error. Yeah. You know, but, yeah. but at the same time, it's not at all impossible that there are incredibly deficient textbooks out there oh, of course. in every school in America right oh, I'm now. I'm sure, I'm sure. I mean, the, the sorry state of our educational system should be a testament to that. I mean, yeah. what are we? We're like bottom of the rung in terms of math Pretty and much, science yeah. worldwide. Yeah. I mean, among developed nations, aren't we like at the... In developed are, nations, we're like, you know, 16 out of 15. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's not I mean, good. Even, even if you're taking an account like Bangladesh, yeah. you know, we're still like, you know, we're kind of on par with them. Yes. So. so we need to support our uh, Mark Lowy's uh, efforts to get to uh, yeah. low cost uh, little paperback textbooks in schools that kids can keep. Absolutely. Right, so uh, you said that um, yep. Mark Lowy is, is a scientist who is a member of our group, but he, I think he's been living out of town. Yeah, he's in Dallas. He's, well, in, he's, in, Dallas. he's in Dallas now, but, he's so, but apparently he was back in town this morning, yep. wasn't he? Yep, he was at the bagel shop this morning. Um, right. He's a great guy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm just seeing him. Has, did he say anything about how his uh, school, the, the textbook efforts are going? Uh, yes. He sent around postcards or cards, I think, to everybody who's going to be in the meetings. Um, mm -hmm. He's going to be voting on it. Uh, and I think he got two notices from people saying that they were actually supporting it. Uh, to, oh, good. to like senators, congressmen, something like that. I don't know. Call to action. Okay. Don't know, don't know the details exactly. All right. Um, but I think got two people saying that he supported them on that. Okay. So, well, great. Sounding good, at least. Yeah. Well, so. great. Well, I just think that it's, it's, it just makes sense, you know, uh, when you think of it. Um, yeah. If you were to have, first off, a lower cost textbooks, so just paperbacks as opposed to these big bulky hardcovers, that um, students could keep them and have them. Part of Mark's argument is that if you have them on hand from previous years, you don't have to spend so much time. When the student goes up to the next grade level, yeah. half reviewing the year, half the re half the year, reviewing what happened in the previous year. Yeah. yeah. So you're really it's so. it's like two steps forward and one step back every year on on evolution, and yeah. that's a strange noise. Huh. Okay. Luckily, it went away. Yeah. So. Russell's playing video games in the controller. <laughs> All right. Uh, knock it off. We're on the air. Uh, okay. Well, um, so, so that was struck down. That's a yes. good thing. Yes. You know, all as soon as we start seeing the peer-reviewed uh, papers about uh, intelligent design, um, you yeah. know, uh, out there. Um, yeah. And the trouble is, I mean, some of these books, these books are being reviewed yeah. by typically lay people. Yeah, uh, Christians and you know, just yeah. anyone who Our, wants to go to these meetings, pick up a copy of a, a pre-release textbook, read through it, review it, get back to it. I don't know if that's really the best way of going about things. Well, here in the should in, not scientists who actually know science be reviewing science textbooks. Mm -hmm. but, I'm forgetting, but but you're forgetting that in this process now, what's become involved in it all is politics. Yeah, and yeah. so now it becomes a matter of like here in in Texas, which I think is is a travesty. There are aren't Texas. There's like this one fundamentalist Christian couple. Yeah, that all textbooks are just sent to. Yep, and they publishers get through them. They just decide to go. Let's go ahead and send send them to these people because if we don't, they'll just complain lots, and we'll have to deal with that. So let's go yeah. ahead and forestall it and by pandering and, to them. And I just th and, and, and I just think it is Christian. it's unconscionable. Yeah. That um, you know these two people who might not, who in all likelihood don't have any level of expertise, and um, I think they were teachers in the past. But again, yeah. I don't, they don't have any expertise in you know biology, physiology, sure. um, science, right? Sociology, English, and, and they're and they're reviewing so. them solely on how well they think the the textbooks jibe with their religious ideologies. Yeah. 
yeah. which is not how you are, you, yeah. you should be grading textbooks. Yeah. Sorry. And they will basically review the textbook and say that look, this is not you know mm-hmm. this is not good for us. So scratch cool. that part out. Yeah. They'll send it back, and take then the publisher will take that out. <sighs> then it goes on to the formal review process. Mm-hmm. So these people have already had their hooks into it. Yeah. And that has got to change. That yeah. has, fortunately, you have a group like the Texas Freedom Network who yeah. are actively challenging, yeah. um, really working on that. And so, um, so school book fights are heating up. Yeah. And um, Hopefully that will be a very good you know, thing. We as an organization are, are getting more involved in that. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I think anybody who cares about you know, the quality of education, particularly... Um, yeah. And I would really like us to see, perhaps I should actually bring this up, um, biology textbooks, I think, are on review. Uh, next year, mm-hmm. um, perhaps we can try and get together with you know some people at UT and see if we can get some actual biology people, who actually mm-hmm. know biology, to yeah. review one or two of the books. Because again, you know I I know a little bit about biology, mm-hmm. but am I really the best authority in the world to be reviewing these books? No. Probably not. Let's find um, people who actually know what they're talking about on topics absolutely. to review it. Yeah, definitely, so. definitely. I'll get the you know, the. Um uh, the National is it National Science Federation or the NSF or the Foundation National Science Foundation. That's right. Uh, whose um, uh, impetus is to get you know adequate science education in all the classrooms. Yeah. And and they advocate the the proper teaching of you know how to teach evolution in the high schools. Yeah. Um. So uh, you know they need to be uh, alerted to this. So. Yeah. so we'll be on it. Yeah. Okay. Um, any any more before we go to calls? Uh, really quick one. Yeah. Uh, Chief Justice Roy Moore again. Oh boy. Just a quickie. Oh. Um, he is. <laughs> he has apparently passed up his thirty day deadline to take down the monument. Well, sure. So he now has. the court has come along and said, now you have fifteen days. It will be down by January third. Um, supposedly. Mm-hmm. Um, but I love what Moore has to say about this. Um. Actually, U.S. just said uh, Roy Moore testified at a hearing Thursday that removing the granite monument would violate his oath of office. The state laws he swore to uphold are based partly on Judeo-Christian values, Moore testified, and Thompson's order basically says that I cannot recognize the source of our system of justice. Sure you can, you just can't force it on everybody else. You can sit in the back of your mind and say, hmm, how's the best way to handle this one? That's fine. Hmm. You don't have to have a two and a half ton monument proclaiming it. Yeah. But uh, Even if it was the basis of our legal system, which it's not. Yeah. So, Mm -hmm. uh, the Chief Justice remarks were bizarre and disheartening. Mm -hmm. They're at variance with federal law. Mm -hmm. The Chief Justice said, blah, blah, blah. But he doesn't care, right? But I mean, he's not not particularly new. He's also also arguing that federal law does not apply to actions by individual states. That's that's a big crux of his whole position. Yeah. and uh, there's something else interesting. Is other information that I found out. You know, they had the, there was this big rally of supporters for uh, this, a bunch of Christians. Although it wasn't huge, about there's 350 supporters of Justice Moore. Uh, about a week ago, Monday, uh, rallied in front of the state capitol building in Alabama to demand the, that the Ten Commandments remain. And this is what's interesting, just to give you an idea of the kind of people who are supporting uh, Roy Moore <laughs> and and you know having these uh, religious documents in uh, in the classrooms. Are, are in, and in public buildings and in yeah. capital buildings and in, 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 in legal buildings and just endorsed by the government, as it were. Um, one of them is a Texas-based group, actually, American Veterans in Domestic uh, Defense. And this is and and I've visited their website and uh, boy, if you want to see, if you if you want just this parade of right wing paranoia, <laughs> check these guys out because you know they have like you know they, they they have their list of enemies of America and it's all it's it's your McDonald's list menu of of <laughs> liberal groups right it's the ACLU and you know, yeah. it's like and it's like that's right if you support civil liberties you're you're anti American yeah um, you know evil rockers and rappers and yeah, Hollywood movies and stuff like these are all the forces <laughs> that are out there to destroy America and 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 these guys are have to be the defenders of America. But um, uh, they, they were at this rally, uh, a fellow, a retired Colonel James Emerson, who was a member of this group from Dallas. Uh, so, um, uh, according to here, uh, said, rambled through several topics ranging from Moore's monument to President Bush's portrayal of Islam as a peaceful religion, which they're not happy with. Yeah. He told the excited crowd that the United States may have to, quote, burn a couple of nations down. Oh, jeez. I've read the Koran, said Emerson, and I believe Allah's proper name is Lucifer. 
Oh, no. so that's, you know. So, uh, Colonel Amerson. Uh, what nation is going to be burned down with these kind of statements being uh, tossed out? Uh, Colonel Amerson said that the only way Americans could survive moral crisis was to uh, believe in God and live according to the tenets of his good book, the Bible. So I guess that includes the stoning women who aren't virgins on their wedding night. Of course, yeah. yeah. So, um, but uh, apparently he, his, his, um, his, some of his remarks are so extreme that even like some of the... Uh, some people were like backing away of it from you know, uh, but let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. And it also, oh, here's another group that was involved in supporting. These are the kinds of these are the people who are supporting Justice Roy Moore, League of the South. <laughs> that sounds fun. Uh, yeah, you know how fun it is. These guys are secessionists. Oh, shit. Yeah. These are Confederate... <laughs> so, these are apparently guys who haven't figured out it's not wow. 1865 anymore. Yeah. And it's, they are secessionists. They're a neo-Confederate movement. And this kind of thing, uh, it hasn't been a lot of attention to it lately, but there is, this is a growing movement in some states in the South, a, ne- a neo-Confederacy. Um, uh, it's uh, founded in 1994. It's the Southern League. It presents a public facade of being concerned with culture and heritage and has become increasingly hostile towards blacks and other minorities. The group's president, Michael Hill, denounces racial intermarriages and has described slavery as a God-ordained institution. Wow. Um, Confederate flags and even placards calling for secession were uh, uh, evident at a rally organized four years ago by the Christian Coalition and other groups. Um, folks, these are the kinds of people Jeez. who, uh, you know, are supporting guys like Roy Moore, having the Ten Commandments in public buildings, you know, thinking that they're the true Americans, the ones who think slavery is God-ordained, um, and who think that, um, you know, anybody who is into these horrible, evil, hippie ideas like civil rights must be, yeah. you know, godless commies out to destroy America. Yeah. So people should be uh, taking notice of this and being concerned. Wow. League of the South, I checked out their website, too. Interestingly enough, it's not as extreme in what it... Oh, well, I didn't go all the way through it, so maybe yeah. there's more wacky stuff on there that I didn't even look at. Uh, the uh, AVIDD, the AVID website, <laughs> American Veterans and Domestic Defense, ha- actually has more blatantly extreme right-wing statements than League of the South's site okay. did. But they're both cause for concern. Yeah. Uh, the AVID, are just, they're just screwy, right? I mean, they'll come out and they'll say, we support the Constitution, we're here to defend the Constitution, Nothing because the Constitution is where all our laws from, and the Constitution is what we need to live by, you know, Constitution this and Constitution that. And then the same breath they say, God rules over America. <laughs> and it's like, okay, so you support the Constitution, except that pesky little bit that says yeah. the government cannot endorse religion. Yeah. yeah so, really, really, yes, there's a cause for alarm there. Definitely should be concerned. Wow. We have callers lined up on the phone. Yes. Uh, I have something, I have some old business from last week. Okay. But you know what? I think I'm going to hang loose. I'm going to take these callers now okay. because they've been waiting very patiently, and we appreciate all of our callers. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, if we get a lull in the show, I will address this topic from uh, last week's show that uh, was just covered very, uh, very briefly. Yeah, that was the last call. I think. Yeah. So uh, we're going to. I guess we'll talk to Wanda first. She's on line one. Yeah. Hi, you're on the air. Hello. How hey. are you doing? I've been enjoying your program for several months now. Thank you. And Thank you. Uh, I bought a book called The Twelfth Planet by Zechariah Sitchin uh-huh. back in the 1980s that uh-huh. I've read several times uh-huh. and it says on the front for the first time proof that establishes where, when, how, and why astronauts from another planet settled the Earth and created Homo sapiens. Uh-huh. And I'd like to show it to you if you haven't read it. I, I'm, com- I'm planning to bring it with me to the next meeting at North Cross Mall. Okay. Um, it's called 12th Planet, you said? Yeah. Okay. The 12th Planet. Okay. Um, you, well, you know, a lot of people aren't uh, necessarily convinced by uh, Sitchin's uh, findings. And uh, if I could recommend to you, uh, if, if you have Internet access, uh, I uh, if you want to throw those websites up on the screen, Russell... Um, uh, there is a, a lot of people pretty much put Sitchin in the same uh, category as Von Danik and a lot of these other ancient astronauts guys, um, essentially saying that what he claims to be uh, evidence uh, isn't really that strong if you examine it. This website right here, the well, skeptic... He, he spent 30 years digging up all this evidence. Oh, I'm sure he did. I mean, uh, you know, there, there are people out there who have spent many, many years, uh, you know, determining that there are these vast conspiracies to kill Kennedy <laughs> and Marilyn Monroe and people like that. I, I'm saying there's just, uh, there, there, is, there are some people who are skeptical of his claims, and if you, uh, this website here, the Skeptics Dictionary, 
at skeptic.com uh, oh. has a listing about him. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look under uh, Zachariah Sitchin uh, in his alphabetical listing, if you oh. haven't, if you have internet access, uh, there is um, there's a skeptical article about him, and then there are links to some other people who have reviewed uh, what he's had to say. Okay. Um, but I, I've, what I've read about Sitchin kind of kind of leads me to think, unfortunately, that you know he may be. You know, just part of the uh, you know the, the, the whole UFO cult uh, subculture. Um, yeah, uh, but uh, I um, now I know that there there is a theory um, that uh, called uh, panspermia yeah. that some scientists take seriously that involves uh, organic molecules coming from space, like either yeah. through uh, comets, through comets and, and you know. That this, yeah. I think that if life came from space, just applying Occam's razor, it's much more probable that uh, it was, you know, because we know that organic molecules are very common throughout the universe. Yeah. Uh, that uh, you can, um, you know, it's much more probable that that in the when early it, days of this the planet, place. yeah, they, they, this, so. that was how organic molecules ended up on the Earth. But... Um, Oh, apparently, from what I understand, I haven't read the book. You've read it quite a lot. Uh, Sitchin, I, I guess, claims to have uncovered these uh, ancient writings that he has translated, and that uh, give him this, uh, that's the whole gist of it, correct? Well, what it does for me, it explains the missing link they've talked about all these years mm -hmm. between well, between the uh, first hominids and the humans. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, there's uh, there are um, better explanations for those missing links, and I think that there are there are some other biologists. Uh, there are there are people who are actually biologists will explain to you that the concept of the missing link, as it tends to be understood by stood by lay people, you know, isn't really accurate. There's no one missing, you know, yeah. empty slot in the process that divides oh. primates from humans. Um, evolution is such a lengthy, gradual process that uh, there are many, many gaps in, in the fossil record. Uh, but if, if you want to find out more information about um, these, uh, this kind of stuff, you know, we'll, we'll be happy to uh, forward you to uh, you know, good resources to where you can get some other ideas as to what might explain uh, those theories, right? So if you're interested in that, we'll be happy to do that. Um, but yeah, and if you want to, wanted to bring uh, you know, uh, Sitchin to the uh, to first cafeteria and discuss him, I'm sure you might find some of us uh, real willing to do that, too. I'm yeah. looking forward to it. All I right. don't want to monopolize you, though. Well, that's fine. Bye-bye. So, okay, okay, well, thanks, thanks for calling. Long. Take care. Yeah, there's the... Uh, well, Russell just had the Talk Origins Org uh, website up there. Yeah. Um, you know, it is very easy... Um, Von Daniken, uh, and uh, the, this was much more popular in the 70s and 80s, a bunch okay. of guys who were catering to this fondness for UFO belief, um, you know, uh, coming up with these ideas that it was because of aliens that human culture arose. And it, it's fundamentally what the Raelians are all about. Uh, but really, when you get right down to it, the, the, the evidence that they claim that they have hasn't really stood up to examination yeah. from what you would consider peer review, not as though not, it's although it's not as if guys like Sitchin and Von Daniken can submit their writings yeah. to peer review. Yeah, they just yeah. go straight to the popular press, exactly, where an eager and receptive public will read it, exactly. Uh, but you know, sensationalism. But you know, you you have other scientists and other historians uh, looking at this evidence, and unfortunately, they don't confer. So I have to say yeah. that I can't give the thumbs up to guys like Sitchin because you know it's just not. Uh, yeah. But but who knows? You know, maybe we'll. Uh, you know, it's it's worthy of further discussion, but. Check out the Skeptics Dictionary because uh, you, you, you'll, you'll find out what some more knowledgeable people think. Yeah. Uh, oh, look, it's our very own Lo Mark Lowy on line two. Hello, Mark. Hi, Martin. How you doing? Yeah, good, to, good to have you back in town. You, do, you guys are doing a great job. Thank Thanks. you. Yeah, um, I uh, gave Russell in the control room a URL to the web page where I have posted most of the updated price information. And uh, main arguments for allowing children to keep their books, math okay. and science books. Okay. You might be able to put that up there. And it's up there right this minute. Great. Textbook issue. And, uh, um, yeah, a couple weekends ago I sent out emails to all of the people who will serve in the legislature starting in January. Mm -hmm. And I've gotten a couple of responses from them. Uh, a couple of representatives, a couple more representatives said that they would support the uh, a bill similar to that which had been uh, sponsored last session. And just two days ago, I got messages from two state senators, uh -huh. one Republican and one Democrat, saying that they would be uh, supporting the bill. 
Excellent. Excellent. Great. Excellent. So they'll be arguing for it, and maybe we'll see some results. Hope so. That's great, Mark. Good. That's that's you know citizen activism at its best. <laughs> Good deal. Good deal. So uh, your plan now, just to just to make sure that we described it correctly, you want smaller, lower cost paperback textbooks that just get handed out to students every year that they keep. Well. At uh, the end. Yeah, essentially. Yeah, that's that's uh-huh. essentially what's done in other countries. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that if it does cost a little bit more money, mm-hmm. it wouldn't be very much more at all, mm-hmm. and it would be so little more money mm-hmm. that it doesn't really matter whether that additional cost is absorbed by the government or by parents. Yeah. Okay. So that's not a concern to me. My concern is to get the books in the in the hands of the kids. Yeah. Yeah. And but but then you know even if it does cost more money, right? If you're talking about something going towards education, that's not exactly political poison. Right? I'm, I'm I think talking it, about you know on the order of maybe yeah. five additional dollars per child per year. Well, but that's fine though, because every politician I think lately they're, they're, they've all been campaigning on, and we need to be putting more into education. Yeah. So. Uh, and, and also, it would uh, it would unburden teachers from having to cover re- review material. Precisely. Yeah. 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 Because you just have the older material to always fall back on and 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 reference. Now, and, they said, and, and as you said, this is the this is the publishing practice in countries that are like Singapore, Korea, Japan, and uh, other right? countries. Okay, oh, yeah, um, which are which are near the top of the educational list in terms yeah. of results. Yeah. In terms of yeah, the international achievement results on math and science. Uh-huh. Yeah. And we should be concerned because like some of those countries, uh, you know, aren't necessarily very friendly to us. That are you know, the, <laughs> Korea, I think, is way up there in the list. Yeah. I don't know which, yeah, yeah. but I don't think really either of well, the well, Koreas are. Singapore, Japan, and, and Korea, they are a pretty. Uh, they're they're pretty good allies of ours. Well, but, but also South this, Korea, sort of. This, but, yeah. this this practice is also followed in other countries. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. and like, these, and they're all they all have better students than we do. Yeah, yeah, we all have they all have a better, more successful uh, uh, academic results, don't in, they? In the at the element at, at you know at the twelfth grade level, uh, it appears to be so. Right, and uh, well, great. I wanted to uh, encourage viewers to uh-huh. take a look at the website, and if they agree with the ideas. Get in touch with your legislators because this is a perfect time mm-hmm. just before the start of the session. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's great. That's yeah. great. So it's House Bill 759. Uh, that's from last session. I, okay. it, if if a similar bill is sponsored this session, it may have a different number. Okay, but that's okay. the but that's at least your, your website link, yeah. link is if that's what it is. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. marklowey.homestead.com slash House Bill 759. Dot .html uh, is the um, link, and yeah, check that out, and, and and we'll go ahead, and we'll also, we'll, we'll make sure that that's up on, on our webpage, we'll, we'll have Russell put a link uh, to that there, so that people who want to go to our website uh, can also link directly to yours, and and read some about, uh, you know, how to, you know, how to support this. Great. I think that's and, great and work, Mark. I Excellent. wanted to emphasize, this is absolutely nonpartisan. Yeah. And yeah. it ha- also has. Uh, I mean, you know, you've got bipartisan support. Sounds like. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's that's great. Yeah. I I don't think this qualifies. Uh, we're getting a question from the control room. I don't think this qualifies, guys, uh, as as any sort of violation of. No, absolutely. <laughs> so not. we're not. I don't think we're talking about anything we shouldn't be talking we're, we're about. We're not talking about who to vote for or anything yeah, like that. Yeah. We're not endorsing any political candidate, this, this any political is, uh, position. This, this. If you think it's a good idea. This has to do with, with math and decide. science education. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what this is. We're not endorsing any sort of a candidate or or, or, or party line here. Um, that's right. This is about uh, this is uh, this is about education, and, and that's something that we're very concerned about. Yeah. And uh, so, um, and well so done. Is, and ex- so is the U.S. Constitution, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. The U.S. Constitution, yeah. as has said, you know, the, the, the government has the right to support. It, it uh, explicitly favors science. Yeah. yeah. So. So there we go. So True. way to go there, Mr. Constitutional Defender. <laughs> hey, great. It's good to have you back in town. You. Uh, hopefully you'll be here for a few days at least, right? Uh, well, uh, we'll uh, okay. see. We'll see. Maybe I'm going to put the pressure on you. All right, Mark. Well, uh, you take care, and um, we'll hope to talk to you very soon, all right? Okay, nice to have you with you, Martin. Hey, likewise. See you later. Bye-bye. All right. Very good. Well, good work. So we'll see. We'll get out there and... Okay, uh, Ron on three. Let's see what Ron has to say. Hey, you're on the air. Uh, good afternoon, guys. How are you doing? Fantastic. Good. What can we do uh, for you? Two points. A couple of points. Mm-hmm. One, uh, the first one is is this. Uh, I've noticed that when some callers uh, happen to be watching this channel and, and they are a bit shocked and they go, 
what are you guys? Uh -huh. And of course, you know, you explain what we are and so on and so forth. But there is, when the debate starts, there is one phrase that, that is too short that conveys, uh, I think, uh, uh, a misleading meaning. And, and the phrase is this. We don't believe in God. I think that phrase, or that sentence, should be replaced with something more precise, even though it takes a few words, few, two more words to say only. But it would be more precise when, when, you, when you say, we don't believe there is a God. We don't believe in the existence of a God, or gods as they are described by any and all religions at the present time. Yeah, okay. Well, that is more precise. Because, I think they say pretty the, much the, the same thing. The, the, the first phrase, when you say, we don't believe in God, it's, it's an implicit admission that there is one, oh, I and, see but point. you choose to ignore him. You choose to turn your back on him. Uh, and and many, of the, many of the people oh, okay. that, that, are, that are curious about what ACA is all about, they go, oh, these people... Even though there is a God, they choose to ignore Him. Oh, okay, that's a good point. That's a good are you, point. Are you with me? So yeah, I am. Yeah. When, when debaters or when people, you know, say you don't believe in God, yeah, that's right, we don't believe. in I think the position should be made. No, we believe there is no God to be to begin with. Well, that's the discussion could could be a little bit better from that point on. That's that's introducing another point, though. Saying you don't believe in God is different from saying you believe there are no gods. Well, our, our, well no, what he's suggesting is just, you can just say we don't believe that there is a God, or we don't believe that there are any gods. Okay. Um, if, if and I prefer to state and make it as a statement of disbelief. If, if you want to say yeah. I believe there are no gods, then you're then you're making a positive belief, which uh, a, a positive exactly. statement that I don't think um, be that I'm willing to say, and you know because. Um, because yeah, because it it, it would be as, as impossible to establish that as as, uh, as as any sort of a positive point. And in fact, you can be very easily disproved. All you need to do is encounter some South Sea Islander who worships yeah. a totem pole and says yeah. that's his god. You know, and you would say, well, if you don't believe that there are any gods, here's my god. It's this totem pole there. Yeah. I've just proved your belief that there are no gods. Yeah. yeah. So so that's not really the way to go about it. It's sufficient for atheists simply to say, we do not believe there are any gods. Show us the evidence you've got. If it's compelling, then we will then we'll adjust our beliefs accordingly. But exactly. yeah, but 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 that's that's exactly. an interesting point. That's, I think that's yeah. well yeah. taken. That's just for the debate. And the second yeah. point is, you initially open the program, and there's something you mentioned at the beginning when you state the purpose of ACA. Uh -huh. And one thing that it, it has never come up, but you always mention it. Uh -huh. But nobody has. I've never heard anybody question you on that. When you say we're here to promote positive atheism. Mm -hmm. Could you could you explain a little bit on that? As a, why do you label it as such positive atheism? Well, I think that not living your life, uh, drowning in superstitions and unfounded uh, irrational um, metaphysical beliefs is a positive thing, right? I think that the more confusion you have in your mind, the more confusion you will exhibit in your day-to-day -day life. I mean, look at... Um, uh, what happens when religion takes extremist form? We see it all over the globe. Now, it's granted not every religion is extremist and, and, and not every religious person uh, takes it to an extremist level. But mainly the statement positive atheism is, is meant more to counter the idea that atheism is just by definition negative. Uh, we are constantly hearing from Christians and from believers that you just cannot have any sort of a positive life, any sort of a viable moral compass, any sort of a definition of right and wrong or what have you, without some kind of belief in an invisible deity. And we are here to say, basically, that's nonsense. It's hogwash. Of course, you can not be religious and live a perfectly successful, happy, content, uh, moral and uh, productive life. Uh, so that, to, to me, that's what positive atheism means. It's just living your life without reference to the supernatural, and that's okay to do. And uh, to claim that it's okay to do does tend to run counter to preconceived notions in our culture. And that's mainly, so that's mainly what the statement is, is there to, to do. It's to counter right. a preconceived notion that we don't think is, is, is um, That answers my viable. question. Yeah. That answered my question perfectly. Good. And the, la the, last item, the last item that I wanted to quiz, uh, ask you about mm -hmm. is, as an organization, ACA, mm -hmm. uh, does it have a political agenda? 
I can I can imagine that ATA would have one in the sense that that you know one of the number one things is to maintain the secular nature of the state and uh, by all means not by all means but I mean by all the permitted illegal means promote the idea that not any one religion should take over the state and declare this a Christian state to oppose to a to oppose it to an Islamic state, for example, in, right. in the Middle East, mm -hmm. and uh, because remember, uh, religious religion was uh, the state in the past. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was taken over from them by secular people, and a secular state was established. Mm -hmm. And they would love to stage a comeback and declare. Mm -hmm. A, a state, a religious state, and basically yeah, Christian, yeah. since that's what they have here. Mm -hmm. And all their attempts, every time, I mean, with the current administration, for example, they inch forward to to almost getting, you know, the, the, the state to the state, oh, we're a Christian. Mm -hmm. But all right. Well, we uh, you know, just... Little things in there yeah. like that. Just to go ahead and answer you. Uh, yeah. Go ahead and answer you. Uh, yeah, we... Well, first off, we're we're a nonprofit organization. We cannot actually be out there endorsing particular political parties or our candidates. Yeah. However, um, there are, uh, as individual members of our group, our group does take an activist stance on church-state separation issues. That is indeed true. We do support that, um, and we we uh, we are activists uh, in in terms of of. Of, of how we support that, um, one of our one of our members uh, who has since moved away, he was he was very active in trying to get uh, you know the Ten Commandments uh, monument mm -hmm. at the Capitol grounds moved to get that relocated. Um, uh, many of our groups uh, uh, many of our groups members went out to uh, Washington recently for the uh, Godless Americans March that was uh, hosted by American atheists. We're not part of that group. We're not affiliated with American atheists, but that whole. Uh, Rally was intended to give atheists a greater presence and a greater voice in the political process. So yeah, I'd, and I think the main focus of the group is simply to be kind of an outreach and, uh, if you will, just a social group more than anything yeah. for atheists to simply have an opportunity to meet and hang out with other atheists. But then within that, once you get atheists together, you'll you will get uh, and as we have done, we've gotten individual members of our group who ha and then we've gotten together as. Um, as a team to, uh, I think, stand up for causes that we believe in and that we support, such as church-state separation, such as increasing the quality of education in our country. But yeah, mainly trying to counter the attempts by the far Christian right, um, who I think have the current administration in their pocket, pretty much, to theocratize America. You know, we're very much uh, in, exactly. into standing That's up against word. that. And so, yeah, we. Uh, so, so it's not as though the, the the group itself is not like we're not like a uh, we're not a pack, you know, right? I mean, we're not a political action uh, organization. You know, we're not a we're not this big group of agitators. Yeah. But uh, you know, the the group as a whole is a social organization. But then. Yes. But but our members yeah. will do things. It's but. one thing about the ACA. It's it's for most of the group, it is social. Uh, for most of the members, but you do have the opportunity, if you'd like, to go out and do more things. Again, go to Washington, you know, a TV show, the radio show. You know, we've got activism if you want to do that, but it's not expected. Uh, that's not, you know, a part of the organization that, you know, well, yeah. if you're not out there marching with a banner, then you're not really a part of the group. Yeah. Uh, not at all. Yeah. So. Right. That's a good well, point. Yeah. Thank you very much, guys, and keep up the good work. Well, appreciate you watching, yeah. Ron, and thanks for calls anytime, all right? Thank you. Thank you. Hey, that was interesting. Good, good, a good point that he made. Clarifying the disbelief position. Yeah, yeah, that that is true. You, we get lazy. You people get lazy in language, and um, yeah, I I have heard that there fundamentalists will sometimes latch on anything. Yeah. To to yeah. attempt to get atheists to uh, to to say, look, you guys really do believe in God. You just don't want to admit it. Yeah. I mean, even even something as mild as if it, if it, you know if you. Um, you know, atheist is. If you're surprised and you say something, oh my God, they're like, Ding, yeah. I heard that. You know, yeah. So, so it's, I always say, yeah, watch exactly. your language, watch what you say, yeah. watch how you express yourself. Be very careful in how you express yourself. That's been a thing that I've uh, I've really um, 
made an effort to do and to learn to do uh, just uh, by virtue of being host of this show. <laughs> I've tried to just, I've actually cleaned up my language a lot more since I've been an atheist because so many swear words are religious, right? Yeah, <laughs> I know. can't use the, them anymore. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> but, but it's a very good point. You know, we clarify the atheist position as simply being where the, dis- you know, we don't believe. Um, there are any gods. Yeah. And, uh, and that. we don't believe in God. Yeah. That's right, because you could say, well, well I don't believe in, you know. Yeah. Our government, you know, yeah. well, there is a government. We have one. I don't believe you, in the Republican Party. Yeah, you, but you can say you don't believe in it in such a way as, yeah. as a means of saying I yeah. have no, I don't trust their methods. Exactly. I don't trust them to serve. Yeah. yeah so, so you're right. He's okay. Ron had a very good point. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Okie dokie. Oh, that was that was Juan. I'm sorry. Yeah. He's, he's called our show many times before. He's uh, we've actually met him. Nice guy. Yep. Okay, so now we're going to go to line one. Let's see. Okay. I think this is Bob on line one. Oh, hi. You're on the air. Hello, atheists. How are you guys? We hey. are fine. How are you? I'm doing all right. I just had a uh, quick question. How do you account for the gap in our evolution? There's a period of 50,000 years where our brain grows at such an incredible amount that it's inconsistent with uh, the evolution of the Cro-Magnon and, and, and the, the species previous to human. How do you account for that? Okay, well, I'm not a biologist, so I'm not the guy that you need to be asking to account for it. I, I assume uh, that... Um, well, what I'm saying is that you can't account for it. It's a rhetorical question, kind of. You, you yeah. Really so I assume that the well, we I, don't we don't have a solid, you know, scholar we can probably can say here yeah. here's one at twenty five thousand years in that period, yeah. and you know show show a record, you know, of every single one in between. But I, I, I but assume I assume that the model. I assume that the point of your question is to that you are attempting to imply that if we can't account for it uh, through evolutionary processes, then that must mean that uh, some god or intelligent designer is responsible. Oh no 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 no! You got okay. me all wrong. I'm I'm uh, just I, just check. Not Christian at all. Not, okay, not I'm just Christian. checking. I just just wanted just wanted uh, to clarify what your position was. Yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to actually have a valid argument. So no, well, no, no. Okay, well that that's fine then. Good. Just wanted to um, um here, and, there's the uh, the best the best source that I have. I, I'm just going to let you know right now. Ashley and I aren't scientists. We don't pretend to be the experts on bio- biology or evolution. Um, uh, the, the best the best source that I've found, at least online, for general readers, just members of the general public, to answer some of these questions is right there at the bottom of your screen. So okay. maybe maybe you'll find that maybe you'll find uh, an explanation for this fifty thousand year gap. I haven't actually um, heard that figure before, yeah, but uh, sorry, oh, hang on, we're getting what I say. Okay. Um, there is a hominid evolution page on there. There's a hominid evolution page on the talkorigins.org website. I'm getting prompted by our yeah. producer here. Yeah. All right, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's got some very complete... Uh, got some... It's uh, sort of uh, gradation of skulls. Okay. All right. So yeah, there's the uh, there's there's a there... it's fairly consistent, but yeah. there, that's why this is still a theory of evolution. I mean, yeah, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, this, 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 this is one thing that's very important to clarify, yeah. right? Is that that what many creationists don't understand, and if if you have creationists that you're arguing with. And they will try to put forth uh, this, this whole notion that, oh, well, if evolution leaves unanswered questions, then that means it's inadequate as an explanation, and we have to right. discard it. But the point is, every scientific field will have gaps and will have uh, questions that it leaves unanswered because, guess what? We don't know everything about everything. And so uh, we know that there are, are gaps in the fossil record. That's why, that's why the whole scientific method is an ongoing method of investigation. We're still learning stuff. We may discover stuff next month that completely makes us rewrite yeah. everything we know about the process. It happened a couple of years ago uh, with uh, some recent uh, Hubble observations of the universe that have caused uh, astrophysicists to have to rethink yeah. a lot of what were some very basic theories about uh, you know the science of just the universe. Yeah. Um, right. So this will happen. Uh, so this, uh, but apparently there are um, uh, what you're talking about. I think is is a common creationist bugaboo, which is they always want to point out things like where are all the transitional forms? We don't have uh, transitional well, see, forms. I don't, I'm not a creationist. Oh, okay. I actually, I believe in intelligent design. I do believe that aliens seeded this planet, and we are a mm-hmm. hybrid a species. Okay. And there's significant evidence to prove this because we did not emerge. Mesopotamia was not the origin of civilization. Well, we, had, we had civilizations in, in Atlantis and Lemuria in the Atlantic and Pacific. And what's your evidence for Atlantis? Uh, there's, well, I, there's physical evidence for Lemuria, and Plato you know, documented Atlantis extensively. Yeah, he made it up. No, he it, Plato, it up. Plato made it, he made it's it up. A story. It was, it was his, I, I it was his ideal communist city. 
I assure you, he didn't make it up. Okay, well then, if you if you have assurance, I'd love to see your physical. They've evidence. been trying to find it for a long time. Uh, I mean, where where is it located? First off, so where, it, where are the ruins of Atlantis? In the middle of the Atlantic, where the Azores, the Azor uh, Islands are. The Azores were part of Atlantis. Okay, and do we have do we have ruins? Do we have uh, old building remnants? Well, there are ruins from Lemuria, actually, which is off the coast of Japan. They have oh, really? found. Yes, absolutely. I saw it on the History Channel just the other day, actually. Ah, the History Channel. Well, that okay. That explains it. Go ahead. Where, where are the um, the? Um, okay, all right. Yeah, no, History Channel is a solid fact. But who are you gonna? You, you got to believe somebody, right? Obviously, you believe. Uh, well, no. I mean, you don't just you. What? The, see, here's how it works, right? Okay. It's it's a lot. There are a lot of theories, and a lot a lot of people will have ideas. Let's say about a particular historical event, right? And some people will bring an agenda to these to the table. Yeah. And. What you do, is it's it's not just as simple as, well, you've got to believe somebody. What you have to believe is what the strongest evidence shows. Now, I understand that you think that we have very strong evidence for Atlantis and Lemuria. That's fine. What I'm wondering is why this opinion of the strength of this evidence isn't shared by the bulk of historians or, or anthropologists or archaeologists. I you know because, I have to look. I have to look at the preponder- I have to look at the preponderance of what archaeologists are saying about the ancient world, and I'm not seeing right. in all of the literature so they, uh, a they, majority they opinion have an favor- to suppress such knowledge. Why would they? Why, suppre- why would they suppress it? Why would? Why would? Why is it so important to suppress Atlantis when they're you not? Know? When they're not suppressing Mohenjo-Daro? When they're not suppressing? Um, you know all the ancient sites in Turkey and in and in Africa. Why is it so important? That, oh no, there's this kingdom Atlantis. Well, well, there's something about is, this. There's something about this set of. I mean, well, but why? I mean, why, why, why would they, why would they suppress one set of ruins when they don't feel a need to suppress the others? Well, why wouldn't they suppress these, Egypt? These are very crucial because it explains the history of our, you know, how power on this planet came to be in the first place. What, what and power? It, it, well, the, well, if you want to get into, uh, you know, the Roundtable Network and the Illuminati, I could get into that, but I'd rather uh-huh. not. Yeah. Uh, but basically, the point is, there is a period of fifty thousand years. Where our brains grew at such a uh, high, you know, increase, and motor and, me- motor and mechanical skills increased to, to such a degree that they're completely inconsistent. It couldn't have happened in fifty thousand years. I believe in evolution personally, mm-hmm. but I do. But not you think we got? You think we got a nudge from space aliens? Well, absolutely, yes. Okay. So, so where are they now? Uh, where, well, um, the, the space aliens who gave us this 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 uh, advantage in our brains. Why did they? So they. So a group of aliens flew here from a distant star, essentially right. giving up their own lives to do this. They came to this planet. They they, so they uh, colonized. In, they colonized originally. Okay, and the original colonists. And to do yeah. this, and and so they left. Why did they leave their original planet? Well, Earth is a project. There were several species that came to Earth. Okay. And we are a hybrid. We're not just an. We were genetically engineered from the primates that you okay. believe that we evolved from. But uh, but what? But why would they? Why would they do this? What was the? What was the impetus to? Why would they need to genetically engineer us if they came here to colonize our planet? Why didn't they just come in, set up shop, and move in? Why did they yeah. need to turn the primates well, there into were, people? There were warring factions on this planet. I see. I and see. They didn't, that's why they destroyed those islands in the Atlantis and Lemuria were destroyed. Okay. <sighs> so that was uh, an alien war that destroyed them. That's absolutely right, actually. Okay. Yeah. Are, you, um, are you familiar with the physical evidence of colonies on Mars? Uh, no, I'm not, because quite frankly, Bob, there isn't any. Yeah. I have to go ahead. We have a lot of callers, callers on the line. So, um, listen, I. I don't mean to be an impolite guy, but but I just think you know I think that uh, you know I, I think I think you've let your imagination run away with you on this one. There's no evidence for any of this no, there stuff. Is, there is significant evidence, actually. David okay. Icke writes all about it. All I'm saying is okay. you, you've got the skepticism as a virtue. All mm-hmm. I'm saying is. You have to be skeptical of both sides, correct? To, to oh, truly course. achieve of the course. Most, yeah, but the know. problem, but the problem is the 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 arguments that you're making, uh, pretty much none of the evidence. Yeah, there, if, if there were strong, no evidence back. If the up. strong, there, if the if the preponderance of evidence in the field was out there supporting the 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 stories that you're telling us, we would be seeing that. Okay, we would be seeing that in the major texts in the peer review journals. Okay, but we would be seeing reports because these people are suppressing this knowledge. Why would they suppress? Why? It? What Again, reason? Do what, they is, have? what is the reason to suppress knowledge? Why? Because if people in control, if, if, in control of what? Okay, what? What is it about? What is it about human beings? 
that needs to be controlled that finding out there were buildings on Mars would throw off balance? Because what, what, what would finding out that there was an ancient civilization called Atlantis do to threaten somebody's control? What would finding out that there were space aliens do to threaten somebody? What control is it that they specifically okay, want well, that would be threatened church, by people the, knowing what, knowing uh, that there was a place called Lemuria? The church, the church would topple if this information came out. Church is one of their units. Of so control. it's the church that's suppressing this information? No, no, Fine. No, no, well, what about the scientific is, community? The church is an appendage of the greater power. You see, they cover both aspects. They can cover. Right. They, they, they're marketing towards Christians and they're marketing towards Indians. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, Science um, kind of gets off on yeah. itself when it can prove other scientists wrong. Yeah. Well, if there was actually a scientist out there saying, I have good solid evidence for Atlantis or, mm -hmm. you know, ev or aliens propagating the earth, something like that, mm -hmm. they would make a killing. Mm -hmm. They yeah. would, they, it, would be, it would be great yeah. for their career yeah. if they could actually put out evidence for it. Do you know how real thing? Do you have any the idea how much? There is none. Do, you have, do you have any idea how much money would be pumped into the space program right now if we actually found a ruined city on Mars? Well, every uh, every we single we would be there next Mars, week. Mars, yeah, we we would be launching we would be launching a flight to Mars like tomorrow morning at eight a.m. There would be a you know, there would be a spacecraft being built specifically I to take astronauts. We already have bases on Mars, and, and NASA yeah. is a front for the greater technology. We already yeah. Have. Uh, Bob, yeah, well, I, I I can assure you that I think you're I think you're a fantasy prone individual who has just allowed your imagination to completely run away wow. with you. I'm sorry to say that because I know that sounds like an impolite statement, but well, then how I, do you account for the fifty thousand? The, the period of 50,000 years where our brain grows. It's, it's yeah, fossils are hard hang, to make. Hang on. Based, based, to, based upon what you've said about other aspects of human of, of the human history, I don't even know now that I trust you when you say there's a 50,000-year gap, quite frankly. Well, we appreciate your call. we got to go on to our next caller. Look We're running out of time. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> wow. This is what happens, right, when you have... <laughs> this is why we need Mark Lowy's... I <laughs> know. Mark, please help us. Yes. This is what, uh, why we fight so hard to have stronger education. <laughs> Look, here's, here's the point of it, okay? There is no sense in suggesting that if some amazing scientific discovery were made, yeah. like, a, like a ruined city on Mars or at the bottom of the ocean, yeah. okay, why, that that would be suppressed. First off, you would have somebody, okay, some scientists would get to claim the headlines. Yeah. Okay, so you would have the discoverer being the guy who is the household word around the world. Yeah. Say, like what happened with Carter. When Carter discovered King Tut's tomb, yeah. Okay, the guy who discovered this was the greatest archaeological treasure of its day. Did he suppress it? Yeah, because it's, like, it's going to overthrow some kind okay. of you know. You have no guys of the Illuminati. Oh no, I'm a I'm a scientist. My entire career rests on discovering amazing things. Yes, I discovered an amazing thing, but I can't tell anyone because that would threaten someone else's power. Uh oh. Bollocks. People, well, come on, common sense. You know this this just the irrationalism that yeah. takes over when you have when you allow these fantastic ideas to sort of take hold in your brain because it's it's neat to think that there's aliens and spaceships and stuff going on. Oh, I see. I think we have some people calling us up who have a word or two to say about this. But, you know, um, yeah, it just makes no sense, okay, to say that, oh, fantastic discoveries have to be... Yeah. yeah, there are all these fantastic discoveries, but they have to... They discovered these ruins, but they have to be suppressed. Well, why didn't they yeah. suppress ancient Greece? And if there were some kind of great, you know, alien war on this planet thousands of years ago, I yeah. think there would be some evidence on that. Yeah. I mean, come on, you can't suppress, you know... Yeah. We can well, find, you know, you we can find at, cities and trees that are buried in them. You, you look at the writings of guys like Graham Hancock... You know, in fact, it's a whole it's it's a whole new area of pseudoscience, which is pseudo history. Okay, yeah. you look at these guys like Graham Hancock, Eric von Donneken, Zachariah Sitchin, uh, all these people, and and you read their books, and they sound very authoritative because they use a lot of attractive scientific sounding jargon, <laughs> big words, and they're good storytellers, they're good writers. Yeah. That's why their books connect with the public. But you're looking through their books, and you're constantly saying, "Where's the evidence? Where's yeah. the evidence? Where's the evidence?" And you just don't get any. And people who actually go out to these locations and they try to find stuff don't find anything. Yeah, you know they. Just just don't find things, okay? I'm sorry. There are no ruined temples in the Azores Islands, yeah. okay? And that big face on Mars, okay, is a hill. You can find a high-resolution yeah. photograph of it now from the Mars Global Surveyor. It's a, just a big hill. Big okay? pile of rocks. And that little, that little area that looks like pyramids nearby... That's more little mountains. That's more hills. Yeah. Okay, you know, it's life just, can play tricks. It's people seeing what they want to see. Yeah, I've okay. seen a lot of big, scary men in my bedroom at night 
you know, in the corner with a big knife ready to stab me and stuff mm. like that. Light does weird things. Does this happen when often? You have, or? Like, Shut up, Martin. <laughs> when you have very low resolution pictures taken yeah. of other planets, you're going to yeah. see weird things once in a while. But, you know, this, so. this whole thing of, you know, this, this is why critical <laughs> thinking is so important, right? It's not just you've got to believe somebody. And, and quite frankly, you know, the History Channel, no, I don't trust them anymore because I have seen that for the sake of ratings, History Channel yeah. is a television network. They want ratings. And they have very reasons. I used to really like them. About three years ago, I was really a big fan of the History really? Channel. I have seen that lately they have become more and more enamored of mm. pandering and catering to pseudoscience. Yeah. yeah. They have entire histories, uh, they have entire series now about ghosts and wow. about okay. UFO encounters and stuff on like this. On the History and, Channel. On the History Channel, right. Wow, okay. You know, you would think they might have this on the sci-fi yeah. channel, but no. But Comedy. So if you want good history, you've <laughs> got to watch the Discovery <laughs> Civilization channel. That's where to get good history programming. But it's so, so yeah, I mean, they're a business, right? It's the same argument that was put forth uh, when Von Daniken was publishing his books and Carl Sagan and people like that were out there yeah. basically saying, this guy's full of hooey. You know, there's absolutely nothing to back up his claims. A lot of the people in the public, their immediate reaction was, well, why would they publish it if it wasn't true? They wouldn't publish it if it wasn't true. Bull. Okay. Publishing they're, uh, publishing companies are businesses, and they're there to make money. Okay. And apparently and if, these people are buying them. And stuff, if you so. can have a number one New York Times bestseller with a person claiming to have visited by been visited by aliens, or claiming to have found you know ruins yeah. off of Japan that no one else can find, or by claiming that uh, they talk to the dead, or that they have been dead and come yeah. back and visit, talk to God, and had a chat and seen crystal cities, <laughs> you know, if you can sell books, publishers want to sell books. Okay, so that's, yeah. I'm sorry, you know, and I know it seems some of our, uh, some of our, um, viewers, uh, are, are, you know, probably who are on our side of this are probably thinking, Martin, you may, you'd be a lot, look, kind of nice and tolerant of these <laughs> guys who are calling, look, you know, it's, <laughs> it's a good day. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's sometimes it's just fun to hear what they have to say. Let's go back to the calls. Let me see that name list again, please. Uh, Monica has been holding very patiently on line two. Let's talk to her. Hey, hi. thanks for waiting. Hi. No problem. Hi, Ashley. No one says hi to you. <laughs> I <laughs> Thank am you. A, you're welcome. I am a first-time viewer. I just kind of flip in channels. I love this channel. And um, I'm at a point in my life where I'm starting to question a lot of the things that I was raised with. Uh -huh. I was raised, obviously, in Texas. <laughs> very Bible-based, very Baptist. But my mom was also very metaphysical. Uh -huh. So she introduced me to a lot of different religious bases and basically gave me the choice. Mm. which was wonderful, but also very confusing. <laughs> and um, I did choose, and I did stay Christian-based for a very long time, and mm -hmm. lately I've begun to question that. And my question as I'm watching you guys is, I, I still believe, I don't know what I believe exactly about the existence of a God, although I do believe in a higher power, but my question is, how do you perceive yourself as mind, body, and soul, or spiritual? Why don't you start? Um... So she's asking you. Yeah. Well, no, I'm asking both of you, Martin. I know, I'm kidding. I know, I know. Um, Do you perceive yourself as just a physical human, I guess? Or? Well, it, it's one of those things that it, it can sometimes be hard to describe and explain something because it takes, all, it takes a lot of romance out of life. Yeah, essentially the brain that you know goes through all the thoughts and the emotions and all the wonderful things of the world, it's chemical processes. It's kind of boring, kind of dry, but... And we don't exp we don't understand a lot of it, but uh, but yeah, I don't think that there is. You know, we have yet to discover any kind of outside power or soul or spirit or anything like that um, outside of normal brain chemistry. So not very exciting, but yeah, you know, religion truth. religion has this concept, or at least a Christian religion and a lot of other religions has this concept called dualism, uh, where there is like the mind and then the spirit. And these are yeah. these two qualities that are uh, within human beings. And they're du we have a duality. We're separate. Okay. And uh, I don't necessarily see it as that way. I mean, I see that part of the human experience is oh. our emotional... Uh, reactions to things it, it is our is our ability to you know we have cognition we can we can think and we can respond yeah. to things around us. I mean that's our intelligence that's our niche. Uh, but we had a caller, in fact, I think on last week's show, where he asked us pretty much just, uh, things about well, you know, so what if I you know what what about my emotions? I mean, if I say that I have a girlfriend and I love her, does yeah. that is that just nothing? Is that just chemical reactions? And 
you know, I mean, am I just a clump of cells and is she just a clump of cells? And are we just saying, <laughs> and I said to him, look, you know, uh, just because you cannot come up with some sort of supernatural yeah. or some sort of otherworldly metaphysical explanation for the feelings you feel doesn't mean they're still not real feelings. Yeah. You know, just because you cannot, just because a certain experience that you might have in life has a perfectly natural explanation as opposed to a supernatural and otherworldly explanation doesn't mean that experience is less real. Yeah. So what if love is just our brain chemistry having reactions to stimuli? Yeah. So what? It's still a real feeling to you. There's a lot of other things. I mean, when you're on a roller coaster, there are a lot of you know endorphins released and stuff yeah. like that. We have chemical explanations for why you go ah. But so, it, but it, but it's still it's fun to thing. but it's still fun to ride exactly. a roller coaster. It's still fun. So. Yeah. So I so I no don't think loss. I don't think that it matters really if you know if um you know if if certain things that people want to describe as being, yeah. say, spiritual. Because when, every time I ask a believer, what do you mean by spiritual? Because they, they'll ask me, well, what do you think about spirituality? I'll say, well, what do you mean by that term? And I get their description, and generally what I tend to get is uh, someone describing uh, an emotional experience that they've had that in some way reinforces or affirms them in their belief system. Yeah. In other words, a person will be raised in a belief system because that's how our culture is, and then they'll have experiences that will, to them, affirm that belief system. Yeah. And that's what they'll describe as spiritual. Yeah. And it could be something as simple as so, you know, you'll, you'll have, a Christian will look at a beautiful sunset and say, God made that. That makes me happy because God made that. Yeah. And so to them, just simply looking at a sunset now becomes a spiritual experience. Now, I enjoy looking at beautiful sunsets, too. I don't describe it as spiritual. I might describe it as aesthetic. Yeah. You know, I just might describe it as a nice, quiet, relaxing moment that makes me feel good. But it, yeah. it just all depends on your interpretations of things. And if the emotions that we feel are just chemicals, so what? That doesn't make them less real. It yeah. doesn't make them less important. Although on a slightly side note here, it was it was funny. Um, it was brought up at the bagel shop this morning. They had a story a week or two back, um, mm -hmm. actually a couple months back. Uh, there's a part of your brain called the angular gyrus, mm -hmm. and what they found is if you put an electrode on it and you zap it a little bit, you have out of body experiences. Um, and so it was sort of like you know an actual part of the brain that you can stimulate that would do this thing. And uh, they had an article. It was in a not very reputable magazine, mm -hmm. um, sort of like you know the Sun type thing. Uh, where Christians were latching onto this, saying, you know, it's God ejector, but it's God's ejector button for the soul. He sends one of his minions down when you die, and he presses that button, and your soul leaps out. And you go to heaven. <laughs> <laughs> it was just the funniest description. <laughs> chunk. They have a little eject button on it. I know, they twist that little knob on your ear, and it opens up, and chink. Yeah. <laughs> just pop it out. So. Oh, well. <laughs> Guys, that was pretty much my question. Thank you so much. Okay, well, thanks Thank for you. watching, and if you have any more questions, just call us up. I will. Thank Take you. Take so care. Much. Bye. 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 Right. That was nice. Uh, okay, on to line one. Shifty. Wait. Whoa. Whoa. I'm sorry. Call back immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't mean to do that. Did not mean to do that. Sorry. But that's, but that's okay. We know him. Hey, call back immediately. We'll get you on right away. Hey, Scott, you're on the air. Yes, hello. Hi, how are hey. you doing? I'm trying to see if I can listen to this on my TV and talk at the same time. Okay. okay. Um, anyway, um, I had a couple questions. Um, yeah. My first one that just came to me, why, why is it that most of the time y'all attack uh, intellectually uh, Christians and not, say, you know, the Buddhists or Muslim or any other religion that believes in a God, but it always seems to be Christian. Every atheist that I meet, you know, you know, that has a TV show or, you know, a seminar or anything like that. It's always about Christianity. Well, you know, it's uh, going wide. Simple, simple answer. We live in America. America is the, the predominant religion is in America, is Christian. That's the predominant American religion. In America, the people who are making the most noise about attempting to affect politics and the cultural direction of this nation uh, are Christians. You know, these are the people who are wanting to be activists. And uh, so... If we lived in a predominantly Muslim country, we'd mostly be talking about Muslims. Although, who knows? Maybe the Hamas would have come in and shot us all by now. But uh, yeah, you but know, we, but we do have choice so words for other so religions. Much, and it's not yeah. so much the, the, the God part. It's, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. today, today, as you've heard on the show, if, the you, if you've been watching the show for any length of time, we've been discussing a lot of the show. The Today's show has been has been devoted to other pseudo scientific and supernatural beliefs. We've been yeah. talking to we've been talking about pseudo history. We've been talking about. Um, the Raelians. So we have, this show more than others, we have discussed other belief systems, other kind of kooky belief systems. But you're right, just because we live in a predominantly Christian nation, you're going to find us mostly talking about what Christians do. That's just an accident of where we live. 
Right. It's not anything that we feel more of an urge to bully those people than other people. Yeah. And, I, and also, I don't think we're really bullying. I think we're just out there. We're, we're presenting, you're not. You're just, we're presenting you're just, criticisms, and, and we throw open the phones for people to ask us questions. So. Right. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, wouldn't, I didn't want to say you were bullying or anything like that. Okay. It always seems to me that it's usually directed at that sanity. But another yeah. thing that I've seen is, like, um, you say that uh, this is what Christians do and this is what Christians say and the people who are running the government or, I guess, voting for policies and stuff that yeah. really infringe on your personal freedom are Christians. But um, the way I see it is that they're not Christian. They are uh, claiming to be Christian. But but they're not. Yeah, I mean, they're I know, not the real Christian argument. Well, my 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 our point of view, since we're, we're the argument. atheists, we're the guys kind of sitting outside that camp. You know, if if Jerry Falwell wants to tell us that he's a Christian, you know, we'll believe him. You know, we'll take his word for it if that's what he wants to call himself. Now, another Christian who is not as extremist in his views as Jerry Falwell mm -hmm. wants to say, I don't think Jerry Falwell is a true Christian. Look, you guys duke that out between yourselves, okay? But you know, if someone if if someone comes to us and says, I'm a Christian and I think this, but we're willing to take his word for it that he's a Christian if he wants to call him that, if he wants to say he believes in Jesus. Now, if you don't, if you as another Christian don't think that, you know, he is using, he is doing what Christians ought to do and say, you know, we hear that all the time, in other words, that's what we're trying to say. One Christian, one group of Christians will do something incredibly embarrassing and all the others will say, oh, don't equate, them. Real don't equate them with us. They're not true Christians. They're, they're the embarrassing ones. Look, sorry, we don't care. We don't, I mean, that, that to me seems to be a debate that Christians need to have amongst themselves. What makes you a true Christian? Well, it's pretty obvious that what makes you a true Christian is whether or not you follow the teachings of Jesus Christ. It's pretty cut and dry. Yeah, but... Well, not really, no. But, a, but, a, but, a, but somebody of a particular fundamentalist camp will interpret following the teachings of Jesus Christ to mean that he can do things like... You know, go out bomb and abortion clinics, or beat up gay people, or do something like that. that. And not to say following the teachings of Jesus Christ, therefore you know he's not a real Christian. Yeah, but but you know, but he'll say he is. Well, what what we're saying though is that you're wrong, and any idiot would know that. But but that's but that's your but that's fine. But that's again, that's a, that's something that Christians need to clarify amongst themselves. Yeah. And our point of view is when you have belief systems that are, in our opinion, they're 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 not founded with evidence. They're they're super, they're, you know, they're superstitions. When you have superstitious belief systems. It pretty much it's Katie bar the door in terms of what so how somebody wants to interpret that faith and how somebody wants to say, oh, well God loves me and this is why He's telling me to crash in a plane into a building because He'll give me seventy five virgins. And most is, most Muslims would be appalled, you know, by that sort of interpretation of Islam. But the problem is, the nature of these beliefs allows for these kinds of wild interpretations and it, and religion I think is just a, innately allows for people to just go wild and say whatever the holy book will say whatever you want it to say you can interpret it however you want that to us is one of the dangers of religion okay well i, so, I agree i yeah. um I, I follow the teachings of jesus christ but i don't uh, i don't believe in religion mm -hmm. and that sounds a little kooky coming from somebody yeah. who says he believes in jesus christ but right you know anybody who understands what, it was, what he's talking about it yeah you no know, said he came to end religion um <clears throat> anyway well, the Pharisees certainly weren't, didn't like him. Oh yeah, no, they didn't. Yeah, so, uh, but anyway, but we appreciate your question. We got a couple hey, more callers we want to get. I got, I got, I got one more. Question. Okay, one more quick one. Sure. Okay. Um, what is it exactly that makes you guys atheists? Is that you don't believe that there is a God? And I want to know exactly why. I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's different for each individual. But um, yeah, people do ask me, well, what do you see that that proves that shows you that there is a God? And I see it a lot, and I see absolutely mm -hmm. nothing that says that there isn't a God. And I want to know yeah. what evidence you have that I can go look at. So I can maybe see that there isn't a God. Well, I wonder what evidence you've seen or have not seen, or whatever, that comes to that conclusion. Yeah. Well, there really isn't ev any kind of evidence against there being a God. I mean, there is no evidence that there is no unicorns, um, anything like that. But we have explanations for everything else. We have explanations for how life came up and got here. We have explanations for how this planet got here. We have explanations for why we act the way we do. Um, and they, they're just better explanations than the big invisible man theory. Um, I've never heard that one, though. Yeah. Well, to, just... The short version is that um, you're right. Well, we're not trying to claim as uh, as atheists. We're not trying to make the positive claim that there can't be anything in the world that could possibly right. yeah, be a god. Right. The problem the problem with the whole idea of suggesting that gods do do things is that, for one thing, scientifically it's not falsifiable. Right. Uh, for you cannot simply say, and we're going to have to go after this one. But you can't. It's easy to say, you know, well. 
absolutely everything that we experience in our lives could be right now being influenced by some supernatural entities. Yeah. But how could you prove that it isn't happening? Well, you can't. So because it isn't falsifiable, I, it doesn't really stand as being something that could even be looked at validly you know, right. from, a, from a scientific empirical point of view. But it, but it also I'm bears about, mentioning... I'm talking about things that you can't see, not supernatural things. Like, well, again, yeah, the things that the, just... There's a designer behind the universe. Yeah, well, the thing is, no. I, again, just... Why, uh, why, well, not? There's design. Why wouldn't there be designers? Well, see, that's the thing, though. I don't think there is... I don't think there is design. Okay. Well, how can you say that? How can uh, you, because how can I can you say... That? And have him operate on you if okay, just hang on. I'll tell you, and then we got to go. I can tell you because I don't think... I, any, know, I know you got to go. you got other calls to get to. Yeah, but I just to let you know, I'll answer you, and then... I don't think I have. I don't think that I was intelligently designed because a, I need contact lenses. My eyes are bad, and b, I, I'm a man and I have nipples, <laughs> and I have an appendix. Well, what's that? And mean? I don't need well, an intelligent, an intelligent designer. Go back to the nipple thing real quick. And a, an intelligent designer would not would not create an organism with things that were superfluous. Okay. Well, how That's, you, wait, 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 wait. How, what makes you think you know exactly exactly what nipples are for? Well, it's I know what they're for on women, but I don't, I've never used mine for anything. They you don't seem to have a use on me. Your wife sucks on them? You like that? They're well, in the zone. Your body has okay. bunches of them. <laughs> Whatever. Okay, so um, God's you into you nipple sucking. You don't believe that your nipples are in erogenous zone? That's okay, so, but, well, does, does your wife suck on your appendix? Uh, no, that's not an erogenous zone. If she did, I don't know if so, I So, why is it there? Why, is it, why, why do we have appendixes if we were intelligently designed? Uh, well, I don't know. Appendix is... Uh, see, see uh, there you market. go. So, it's, so intelligent design is no better an explanation yeah. than, uh, than, uh, than uh, it's... No, you're wrong, because appendixes, appendixes did have server purpose at one point in time, but they don't anymore. Yes, but... In so and that, past. that means that we, that we have evolved in such a way that we no longer use our appendices, you see? Yeah, and that's it why much they're, more, it they're much, going away. They're getting smaller and smaller. They're, yeah, so, they're gonna be gone. so the, the fact that we have appendixes and wisdom teeth and all of these things that we don't need in our bodies is evidence of an evolutionary past and not just a, a divine fiat from an intelligent designer. Yeah, sure. But anyway, right, but anyway, we got to run. We'll talk to you okay, next time, well, okay? Well, call us, call us next week. We're out of time. All right. Yeah. Sorry about that. Okay. Couldn't wait. Hi. Hey, guys. Sorry Hi. about that. Jesus, Jesus came to end religion? Is that what I heard that guy say? That's what he heard him say, yes. Man, if that's the case, he was one big stinking failure. Yeah, wasn't he? Because <laughs> I'm looking around and I'm just seeing religion all over the place. Yes, yeah. this yeah. big religion devoted to Jesus of all people. Yeah. yeah. So. Now, yeah, you know why I'm calling, of course. I have a feeling, it's yes. All this, all this space alien nonsense. Yeah, okay. yeah. Here's simple rule of thumb, folks. Yeah. This is advice for those of you out there who might feel like there are unanswered questions that need to be answered. Okay, mm -hmm. The simple rule of thumb is if you have to make up an answer that is more complicated than the question you're trying to address, mm -hmm. then that answer isn't worth it. Right, That answer is likely to be false. If, if in order to explain this supposed 50, what did he, what did he say, 50,000 50, 50, years, years year yeah. gap, if there is any such thing, if, yeah. if in order to explain that, you got to have ancient lost civilizations and a vast conspiracy by the church and scientists and, an alien and war. alien wars and yeah. alien beings who you know came here from light years away to That's create a, a science experiment. if you have to have all that baggage to explain, to explain you know, this years. relatively small question mm -hmm. then you're off track yeah, <laughs> yeah. right but you know and, what these beliefs do is they cater to this I uh, idea that that some people have that uh, life is just more interesting when you have all this made up fantasy around it. Yeah. And it's people who are exploiting these desires that folks have to believe in some sort of higher thing and what they do is they provide them with this ready made elaborate story that they can latch onto and they don't think about these things and, like And to me that's such a tragic waste. Yeah. Now you you mentioned earlier between callers that uh that you're saying, you're saying, well, you know, some of you people out there probably think we're being too nice to that guy. And I know exactly who you're referring to. When you said that. <laughs> but you no, know, Martin, I'm actually, I did not call in to, uh, to, to criticize you for being too nice to that guy. Uh -huh. I actually called in to attack Ashley. Oh. Ashley! What dude, I do? you are a, uh, an instance of a species that has evolved over millions and millions of years okay. to be able to think and reason, to, uh, to analyze things, to build things to create things. It's astonishing what it is to be a human being. 
Okay. And so when people call in and say, you know, do you, do you believe in like dualism and stuff? You don't immediately have to give up the entire idea that it's cool to be a human being. I know that I know that we're used to dealing with these people who are coming from the perspective of, oh, you know, it takes all the magic out of what it is to be human mm-hmm. if we if okay. we don't have souls. No nonsense. That's complete and utter nonsense. It's yeah. a, just a different kind of. Uh, you know, astonishing explanation. Yeah, it's just a different kind. The, the advantage is it happens to be true. Yeah. Okay. I mean, the, 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 well, that's the point that we're making, though, when <laughs> saying that look, just because love or these emotions that we attach all this spiritual significance to are the result of chemical reactions, yeah. that doesn't mean they're any less real. Exactly. Right. Just because we have a basis for it and it's not some mystical thing doesn't mean that yeah, it, it, it's worthless or meaningless. Yeah. So. It not only does it mean that it's not, it means that it is. It, it yeah. is amazing yeah. in exactly the same way that. <laughs> It would be amazing if we had souls that were animating our our bodies like invisible pup masters. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's it's yeah. astonishing either way. But you know, yeah. folks, latch on to the astonishing explanation that happens to be true. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and what is there? And what is the what is the preponderance of evidence supporting? You know, sometimes it's fun to let these UFO believers just ramble on. Yeah. But you know, it's. Uh, but the point is, if you really know, and I told a caller this a couple of weeks ago, if you really know, if you study science and you find out how the world really works, you will find that real answers to things are so much more amazing than what the supernaturalist can invent. Yep. But I appreciate your call, Jeff, and we are now flat out of time. Thanks to all of our callers. Thanks. Uh, we'll be here uh, maybe next Sunday. Tune in, check. Mm-hmm. But if not, the fifth for sure. Theus, we don't hate. You, we just, just think, think you're wrong. wrong.